going to see bend your back and get into it and I'll let you charge it. So the steering industry come a long way. All the old hand pieces, the yonks, had an oil screw in the barrel. You had to fill that full of oil, keep them cool, keep them lubricated. Heineken could come into Australia 20 years ago, these got there, so even his hand pieces have come a long way. And one young bloke, or well, a couple of young fellows at this year's school, actually, I walked up and said, Hey, where do I go? And I said, You what? Yeah, this is the very first hand piece here. And um, they look like bog eyes. That's how they got their nickname. These old fellows would have been legendary hitting off the blades onto these. Couldn't put much oil into these little fellows, though. They're just full of hot boxes. But, yeah. And these hand pieces these days come a long way, they're balanced. These little fellas, when you hold your hand in the middle, they want to drop. So you'd have to hold your wrist in the middle of your Yeah, so um, legendary stuff with the old hand pieces in the narrow gear. So everyone started using these, and these hand pieces are your money maker. The average price for these is about $500. So I just bought a new Heineken down there, $600. And I'm going to show you a little bit of the Heineken Bob Ice Cream Company. Now, this is the Bob Ice Cream Company. They were founded in 1954. That little cutter on the front, it worth nine to thirteen dollars. When we're sharing all day, we change one of them every half hour. So you start working up at seven in the morning. We do that two hour run off to about Jackie hour. So you work for two hours. You have half an hour for morning smoking. Another two hours, you have an hour for dinner. Another two hours, half an hour for afternoon smoking. And another run, you knock off. So all half hour hours, you change gear. So you have a bucket like this one sitting on your stand. There's a couple in there. And it doesn't matter where you are, you just keep putting them in here all day. When a contractor, yeah, I was still doing a bit of wool passing. So nearly 12 months ago, what is now, I got invited to White Cliff to do two weeks wool passing up there. The boys up there are changing their comb every half hour, they cutter every 10 minutes because the dirt, dust, rocks get in their belly and legs. So you keep filling him up and knock off at up past five, say about four to six, six o'clock. All you can have to cut it out of that container dipped into the container like this one up here on the wall, boiling hot water and detergent in there, wash them up with that brush, and yeah, you can resharpen your tools. So over the building over there, you'll see old mates on the grinder making sparks, resharpening these, but he's concentrating. There's a perfect proper grind you get on these cones and cutters, the better cut you're going to get through the wool fibres, the happier the sheep's going to be, the more money you're going to make. Because when the boss, yeah, every time they pulled up smoke those dinners, etc., have to walk out that back door, out of this can, out pen from both sides of this big shed. You count every single sheep out of every pen under the person's name that saw it because we get paid for the sheep. Three years ago it was $3.01, I don't know what the one cent was doing. Then it comes to $3.10 and currently, yeah, $3.20. So in a two hour run, head down, bum up and get as many down that money box hole as you can, that's how we make our dollars. <laughs> So a shearing team, yeah, like the rugby league team or netball team, it's a team on the end of it. You get a good team working together, it just flows. Except for this ram, I've got a young ewe in there, South Australian blood, I've been shearing them. And uh, yeah, six shearers up here, every two hours there'd be no problem to get 250 sheep out those pens outside there. That's 250 fleeces to get picked up on many young girls these days. When I shear this big fella, I'm going to throw the belly wool out. I'll catch that up that board. A little bit of short wool off his leg, a bit of fertiliser around his bum. That gets taken out with that broom up that board. So the more work you've done up there, well, this will work on that wool table when there's 350 fleeces, or 250, sorry, fleeces go over him. So a lot of people ask you about shearing horse. Yeah, maybe it might be a little bit different. But admittedly, it's hard work. You have a bit of fun while you're doing that hard work. The best, you meet a hell of a lot of good people. The best part about the shearing industry is you're never in the same spot for too long. You're always shifting around. My shearing run was from Carrefour down here to Moor, out to Oxley, Hatfield, Bulgall, I don't know what, Cliff, Bracket Hill and bit towards Tipperary. So you get a gang, shearers, shed ends, class, pressure and the cook. There you go. You're having a good look around, doing a bit of hard work, earning good money, but having a bit of fun at the same time. So that's our roles. So we'll go back to the old days. Yeah. When these hand pieces move around, yeah, we didn't carry our own hand pieces, etc. Really. When these fellows were around, the old expert was already at the full check when he turned up. He'd give you one of these, so you trusted him to give you a good one. If this jig it up a little bit, he trusted him to fix it. Trusted him sharpening all your tools too, he's a pretty handy man in the wool shed. 
And back in the old days too, yeah. These days, there's no women allowed in the wheelchairs at all. There's men only. And um, pretty strong stuff for a young bloke getting into the chair. It's back way back. Yeah, so everyone's concentrating. You didn't see an old union man walking in the back door because you're concentrating. Yeah, that's right. So it's up to the wall presser. He's usually down here, the back door. See the lady come up the steps, come round here with swans, etc. He'd yell out ducks on the pond. See the yell that out, everyone knew there was a lady in the shed, everyone would be prim and proper up this board. Plus, in the old days, how we load the shear. If you generally want to learn to shear in the old days, they'll shear at that time, that patience, that teacher. If you weren't genuine, they'd tell you get turned down the road because you're wasting their time. These days we carry all our own hand pieces around, personal cones and cutters, grinder. Could be 60, 40, 50, 50 girls or boys at a wall shed, and these young kids go to a cheering school and get taught properly. So she's all come a long way. So these young kids come to these cheering schools. Yeah, 90% of them have been in the industry. So they've sort of been, cheerers have been helping them with the ankle, belly wool and sheep, finish them off. Got a bit of an idea. 10%? Yeah, never seen one of these animals before in their life, and they still make cheerers. It's amazing where people come from. So yeah. Two kids turned up here, shear and sheep into shear and school with jeans on. I only saw one sheep, then they had to go and buy a pair of these. So these are proper shearers down the roofs. It's impossible to shear sheep in jeans or attract these hands because birds will go straight through. These are double thickness on the front, single on the back. Two kids had sand shoes on. Then they had to go and be able to get a pair of these little fellas. But have a flat sole when you're shearing. If I'm shearing in boots or sand shoes, there's a bit of a heel on the back. When you bend over shearing a sheep, you overbalance. First thing you've got to realise when you're picking one of these up, you're dealing with a semi-wild animal. All sheep out there, see humans twice a year, get chased by motorbikes and dogs. So you've got to have that upstairs eh? before you pick one up. So yeah, shearing sheep, wild sheep, sand shoes, boots on, they'll just slide around on this board like that. These little fellas are made with leather, so when you drop them put into the board like that, you'll see it on this fella for sure. You can hang on to them. And it's a big drag race, big competition, so you're all hot and sweaty all day. Yeah, dungaroos are right up with boots and sand shoes. Grass seed burrs get in your socks when your feet are soft. Like a needle going into your foot, so all that stitching stops that. So two necessary bits of equipment before you pick one of these up. So you have to cheer your school. And your first day, you've got these. Here's about these little hand pieces. You learn how to line the canes and cutters up, that's very important. But how we make these cut is you screw that tension nut down. If that goes down too tight, that'll get hot. Too loose, or we'll get underneath that cane and cut up. Now, already said, once you put a hand feet, you want to blow. This is really very important to do your cane right up this way there. You want to get a piece there, and you come all the way up this way. In fact, you do another big one. So this way there, the back of the wall there. Another big one.
Well, once I set him up, one of that wrinkle there, you couldn't see that when I was here in So the only way to shear a tree fish for us. So, yeah, he wasn't too bad. I thought he'd get a bit more excitement, but he didn't. You were very lucky. Yes. You were very lucky. Hmm. I wish we didn't yeah. hear, mate. <laughs> Now you want to come up and give me these little pat kids? Come around this way. Give them a pat down there. Yeah, you go. Come around this way, mate. You give me a kick up or a tongue or a mouthful. Give them a pat down there. Feel that. Get that one. That little one. 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 So a little belly walk. Yeah, young kids would have caught that up the board because a fair bit of burr and dust in there. That gets put in a separate compartment, but being a clothing wool, he looks very short when I put him down there. Once I go by on him and pull him out, he comes out about 60 mil. So a merino bean clothing wool, that belly wool, will get carbonised. Boiling hot water detergent, bit of acid, soften all those burrs up, they will get combed out of there. And that's what the warm socks get made out of. It's amazing what they could do with him. Young Chet Ant with this broom, I flicked it out. Bring that little bit around here. And you can see it off his leg. Around his bum there's a little bit of fertilizer. That goes down there into that box. It still gets used a bit more work. The importance of that is, yeah, how you set, set your shed up. You get a shearer. Here he is. Wow. So yeah. Now we shear his sheep. A little bit of wings on this side. That's not too bad, actually. Let's get that out of the rack. Right. Well, we shear his sheep, all the bird is all the way around the edge. So now it's up to the plaster and the shed end. We're going to make another line of wool. You've got to use your fingers like playing a piano doing this because you don't want to waste any of that good wool in with this burry line. A little bit of fertiliser, everyone knows it's down here. So I'm just going to walk around. You're going to see a bunch of your fingers doing this, but. And we're going to pull them out. By the time I do this by myself, I have about four places sitting there in front of that table bed. Pretty quick work. So, yeah, there he is. And, um, yeah, the belly wool, you go in that basket over there. These are the problems going in that basket down there. So, um, yeah, he's was hot off the press. That's still a bit. That is good. The best natural style of the whole lot. And the sister of wool, a marina, heating, cooling, thoroughly distant.